Welcome to Jerry's Gene Scene. In the previous video, I talked about how Mendel worked on the monohybrid cross. Today I'm going to take a look at how Mendel determined the difference between the homozygous and the heterozygous for the dominant yellow-eyed phantasma. We learned previously when we looked at the monohybrid cross that there are two phenotypes that result in the uh, F2 generation. And in the case of the phantasma that we were looking at, we ended up with yellow-eyed and white-eyed phantasmas. So we can see that there are three genotypes that resulted. We have the homozygous for yellow-eyed, we have the heterozygous, which is also yellow-eyed, and we have homozygous for white-eyed. It's very easy to tell what the genotype of the white-eyed phantasma is because we know that both of the alleles must be the white-eyed. Otherwise, it would show up as yellow, as yellow is the dominant. The problem, though, that Mendel was faced with is how to determine the homozygous uh, yellow and the heterozygous yellow, because they would both appear to be the same. We already saw when we did the, the F1 cross that we are crossing the homozygous yellow with a homozygous white and we remember that through that cross we had 100% yellow-eyed. But if we cross the heterozygous with the homozygous white eye, then that is called a test cross. And let's take a look at what happens. Taking a closer look then at our test cross, we will separate out the gametes and see what predictions we can make about the offspring. So in this case then, we end up with yellow-eyed and yellow-eyed. But in this case, we end up with white-eyed and white-eyed. Let's see how we can make that prediction. Let's use our usual algorithm that we looked at in the last video, phenotype, genotype, gametes, and offspring. And with the phenotype here we were looking at a yellow-eyed And then we are crossing that with a white eye. And the genotype of the yellow eyed was heterozygous, so that's a big Y and a little y. And the genotype of the white eyed was homozygous, little y, little y. There are two possible gametes then for the yellow eyed. There's a big Y or there's a little y. And for the white eyed offspring, for the white-eyed parent, there is only a little y as a possibility. We'll set up our Punnett square then. And because there's a big y and a little y, we'll make two squares on the top, but we only need one on the side, and that's little y. We end up with big y, little y, and we end up with little y, little y, and that is a one to one ratio of yellow eyed to white eyed. So just a quick look here again at how to determine whether the yellow eye is a heterozygous or a homozygous for that trait. If we cross a yellow eyed with a white-eyed, we have two possible outcomes. 
If a hundred percent of the offspring are yellow-eyed, then we can determine that the yellow-eyed parent is homozygous, big Y, big Y. However, if even a single of the offspring end up with white eyes, then we could determine that the yellow-eyed parent is heterozygous, big Y, little y. Thanks for watching. You can review the monohybrid cross by clicking the video that's on your left. And you can make sure that you follow future Jerry's Gene Scenes by clicking the subscribe button.